Ghana was in crisis just three decades ago, impoverished and suffering from famine and on the verge of economic collapse. Ghana gained independence in 1957, and the government immediately focused on the country's economy. Ghana's cocoa crops, which were brought over from the Americas in 1978, seemed to be securing the country's status as an up-and-coming economy to be reckoned with by the late 1990s. But all too soon, the booming economy began to slow down due to a drop in cocoa prices. Despite the fact that Ghana was a major exporter of gold and had a wealth of natural resources, the country's heavy reliance on cocoa exports caused the economy to suffer and took a toll on all aspects of life for Ghanaians. Fast forward to today. The West African country has made an incredible comeback. Ghana has long been known as one of the world's largest cocoa producers, but its growth is now being fueled by oil. The country faced significant challenges, and Ghana's economy was far from being Africa's fastest growing. Ghana's economy has risen to the top of the GDP growth tables as a result of increased crude production and rising prices. While Ghana's prosperity is closely linked to the oil markets, it remains one of the world's largest gold exporters, and cocoa is still a significant product. Welcome to Think Rich Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. In 2019, Ghana had the fastest growing economy in Africa. This is a significant achievement for any country with a history of economic ups and downs. But how did Ghana manage to get it right? Their efforts toward good governance and sustainable development appear to have been successful. It's not just Ghana's natural resources that are propelling the country's economy forward. Under a stable democracy, government initiatives to formalize the economy and introduce a more favorable taxation structure are starting to bear fruit, the IMF says. Its once struggling manufacturing sector is also benefiting from policies aimed at diversifying the economy and preventing over-reliance on commodity markets. Good governance can result in a cascade of benefits for communities, such as reduced inequalities, better jobs and economic growth, higher quality education, and more sustainable cities. In Ghana, Good governance began with government officials increasing their commitment to improving governance. This entailed paying attention to what the country truly required and making decisions based on Ghana's past, present, and future. And it was because of this good governance that something remarkable happened in the 1980s. Ghana's economy was being bolstered by factors other than a new commodity that the country could sell. This strength came from a more structured and equitable system of governance. The new government prided themselves on running a stable democracy, and their government initiatives looked to strengthen society and industry through economic reform. By the mid-1990s, Ghana was once again experiencing rapid economic growth, thanks to good governance embodied in policies and plans designed to improve Ghanaians' quality of life. However, it is easier said than done because each country has its own set of circumstances. Good policy decisions in various sectors of society are required for sustainable development. For example, the industrial sector, the economy's goods-producing sector, has an impact on health. And because governments advise all sectors of society, good governance and sustainable development are inextricably linked. The Economic Recovery Program was implemented during the country's early years of independence, ERP. This program had its focus on urban issues and sidelined the challenges faced by rural communities. In this way, the ERP overlooked the connections between rural and urban communities and how one community could benefit from improvements in the other. Since Ghana's independence, rural communities' wealth has lagged far behind that of city dwellers. Bridging the equality gap meant providing better access to jobs and higher pay for rural residents.
and by 1997, the Ghanaian government had devised a strategy. In Ghana, good governance began with government officials increasing their commitment to improving governance. This entailed paying attention to what the country truly required and making decisions based on Ghana's past, present, and future. And it was because of this good governance that something remarkable happened in the 1980s. Ghana's economy was being bolstered by factors other than a new commodity that the country could sell. This strength came from a more structured and equitable system of governance. The new government prided themselves on running a stable democracy, and their government initiatives looked to strengthen society and industry through economic reform. By the mid-1990s, Ghana was once again experiencing rapid economic growth, thanks to good governance embodied in policies and plans designed to improve Ghanaians' quality of life. These gains were boosted in 2007 by the discovery of offshore oil, and Ghana's economy was on the verge of collapsing. Ghana was dubbed the world's fastest growing economy in 2019, with terms like skyrocketing used to describe its expansion. Ghana transformed itself into the world's fastest growing economy in just three decades. According to the World Bank, the country has also consistently ranked in the top three African countries for freedom of expression and press freedom. These successes all stem from good governance and a shift towards sustainable development. Good governance had brought with it some great opportunities to turn paper policies into practical progress in the form of the Village Infrastructure Project, VIP, looking to intensify efforts to reduce poverty and increase the quality of life across the country the Ghanaian government launched the VIP. There was a keen call for community participation, even during the planning phases of the project. The VIP had four main focus areas, all aligned to community concerns. One, rural water infrastructure. In terms of annual rainfall, Ghana ranks far ahead of other African countries. However, this abundance of water was not evenly distributed geographically or seasonally, contributing to the country's unequal distribution. The importance of managing the country's water resources was recognized through the VIP the government invested in and built infrastructure for water catchments, as well as water conservation efforts. In this way, they hoped to improve water distribution, making it easier for people living in rural areas to access and use clean water. With work on water infrastructure in full swing, the country may become bogged down in other rural concerns. 2. Rural Transport Infrastructure Before the implementation of the VIP, only 8,000 of the 22,000 kilometers of road feeding into rural areas was maintained by the government. Ghana's history demonstrates how its economy was reliant on agricultural products, and nothing had changed much by 1997. Moving produce and livestock from fields to farms and farms to markets became a priority for the Ghanaian government. This was crucial to the growth of Ghana's economy. The roads that rural communities had to contend with were not designed to accommodate cattle-drawn carts or motor vehicles. As a result, headloading heavy produce, carrying items while balancing them on one's head, became commonplace. And because men were in charge of the farm's groundwork, women and children would be in charge of transporting produce and dealing with the unkempt roads. The government was up to the task of improving the quality of life in villages, and got serious about providing clear roadways so that vehicles could begin to carry the load for women and children. 3. Rural Post-Harvest Infrastructure and if the roads are ready, the supply must be consistent. However, improving roads would imply more than just transporting the usual load of produce to markets. It would also imply increasing output to new heights. This posed a problem because Ghana lacked sufficient quality post-harvest facilities, buildings where produce is stored before being transported to markets, to store an increased amount of produce. Prior to the VIP, spoilage of harvested crops accounted for a staggering 30% of harvesting costs. To address this issue, the VIP provided financial and practical assistance in developing the infrastructure for post-harvest facilities. Now farmers could make use of cost-effective preserving techniques, such as cleaning, sorting, drying, smoking, and grading of products to extend their shelf life. 
The government also assisted in setting up individual and group-owned and managed facilities for small-scale producers. This was a major stepping stone in community empowerment and set the scene for farmers to take control of their own agricultural futures. 4. Institutional Strengthening the VIP also shed light on interesting developments in Ghana, such as institutional strengthening through community empowerment. While institutional strengthening may appear to have been upper-edge task in Ghana, it was all about returning power to the people. It began with the delegation of administrative responsibilities to 110 district assemblies DAS, transferring power from the national to the district level. The DA were given the most power at the local level and were in charge of basic education, public health, environmental protection, and sanitation. The Constitution allotted 10% of the gross domestic product GDP of the country to this purpose. This was known as the District Assembly's Common Fund DACF, and each DA was appointed an agricultural coordinator from the community to push post-harvest infrastructure and other agricultural activities. This allowed rural communities to settle into managing projects on the ground that would improve their own livelihoods. With the VIP and other government initiatives well underway, the world could see how good governance got Ghana steering towards sustainable development. Nonetheless, Ghana continues to strive for more sustainable development because the gains made in Ghana can bring hope to many people in difficult situations, but maintaining progress while protecting natural resources can be a difficult balancing act. The World Resources Institute, RAI, reported in April 2019 that Ghana was one of the top 10 countries losing swathes of its rainforest. Interestingly, the rainforests are being cleared to make way for cocoa crops, which have once again become a major export commodity in Ghana. Even though Ghana's economy has grown in recent years, it was expected to fall again in 2020, which it did. This thorn in Ghana's side appears to stem from a struggle with sustainability. Yes, Ghana has incorporated the concept of sustainability into its economic reform programs, but promises on paper do not always translate to reality, except in cases of good governance. Making farming environmentally sustainable by conserving soil, forest, and biodiversity resources was identified as a key challenge in the Overseas Development Institute's ODI review of Ghana's agricultural growth. Working in its favor, Ghana took steps toward the UN SDG before the goals were even compiled in 2015, demonstrating Ghana's commitment to sustainability. And it has stayed true to that history launching a slew of programs in every sector to address its sustainability issues, such as the Low Emission Capacity Building LECB, project including several projects aimed at educating communities on sustainable forestry and water use. This demonstrates that Ghana has the good governance and sustainable development strides required to get its economy back on track as long as it adheres to sustainable progress. Thank you for watching. If there are any tips you think should be on this list but is not, leave a comment let us know. Help our channel grow. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Support us by liking the video, subscribing and turning on your notification.